Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk about the dangers of digital and why digital is not really the best way to think about going. Now, when I talk about digital, because I am a physical media channel, I do have a bias towards physical media. I have a bias towards collecting it. I, am a, I have a bias towards, I am a physical media collector, so of course, naturally, I'm going to say, hey, this is a better option. But I just want to talk about why digital is not always the best way to go and why I think physical is the way and why digital has a long way to go for me to feel comfortable migrating across. And even then I may not feel comfortable. So one thing I really want to talk about is that your purchases are not your purchases, no matter how you want to look at it, no matter how you want to frame it. I know there's a lot of people who say, hey, no, I've purchased this. It's mine. It's in my collection. I've downloaded it. I have whatever. You don't own that content. And you might say, I don't own the content on this disc too. I understand. I do not own the copyright on the discs behind me. But when I think about it, and when I look at the industry, we talk about these licensing deals like they're never going to affect us. But I've actually had purchases disappear. When I did go digital, I used to have an original DVD collection. And that original collection was mostly DVD. I had some Blu-rays in there, but it was mainly DVD. And when I went digital, I tore down my original collection. I threw away a lot of the cases, which was very silly. And then I kept all the discs, but put them in binders. And I was like, I won't need them ever again. I'm going digital. And I have about 800 movies on my iTunes collection still. I have maybe two, 300 on Google, Google Play Store. I have all these, you have, uh, what are these called? Ultraviolet codes and ultraviolet purchases that I have in my library as well. So I do have digital collections and I've noticed that things disappear over time. One of which was Spider-Man 2 disappeared when everything was getting upgraded. All my purchases were getting upgraded for uh, 4K. And Spider-Man 2 was in that dilemma. It was, everything was getting upgraded. Spider-Man 1 got upgraded to 4K. Spider-Man 3 got upgraded to 4K. And then Spider-Man 2 disappeared for a little bit. And I was like, um, I own that one. What's going on here? Like, shouldn't that have been automatically upgraded? And iTunes, because I messaged Apple at the time and was like, hey, what's going on with this one? And they're like, hey, uh, yeah, the license is a bit, yeah, a bit weird with that one. So that was not automatically upgraded because I'm sure the studio understood they could sell that again in a 4K copy because Spider-Man 2 is considered to be one of the best movies. And... I was like, well, I still want access to the movie. Like, what's wrong? I bought the thing. And they were like, oh, but you know, it's been upgraded, this and that. So now I have access to it again because I messaged them. But it is HD and it is hidden away. So I have to go through the actual iTunes library. I can't search the store and buy it and have a look at it that way because it will say it's, you don't own this. I have to go through about four different menus to get to my purchase or what I thought was my purchase. What it is, is a long time, a long term licensing deal and you do not own that content. They can take it off you. They can say, hey, no, hold on. We've lost our right to stream this, so you can't have access to it anymore. And purchases can disappear like Discovery did in December last year with PlayStation. PlayStation lost their licensing deal with Discovery. They were not longer allowed to have Discovery content on their service. Now, obviously they reverted, but it can happen. It can go away. What happens when mergers happen, you know? Mergers can change a lot of things. Like we look at something like Crunchyroll and Funimation. Now Funimation had their own streaming service. A lot of things were purchased through Funimation. And then also what happened is they merged into Crunchyroll because that is another Sony corporate entity. And what happened then is they were out, they were, they were going out of the way to let you know that your purchases on Funimation were not necessarily purchases made through Crunchyroll. So they weren't going to migrate that across. And this is what I mean about licensing deals. Like things can happen where you have no control over the corporate entities. I mean, Time Warner AOL happened in the late nineties. And we look at the Warner Brothers of today. It's not the same as it was under Ted Turner. Ted Turner was big on owning Looney Tunes. He was big on owning his content. WCW, for example, Try to find a copy on the WWE Network today of Hulk Hogan coming out to Voodoo Child or Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Um, you won't find that because Voodoo Child is a licensing deal that has expired. 
so the WWE Network has replaced it with the NWO theme, which was not what he entered to. And a lot of those WCW themes from back in the day have been changed, so if you're happy with changes, that is the way to go. The other option is VHS. I've got some of the VHS tapes. And the, other, the rest of the way, I mean, there's unofficial means to get them, and that's not, I don't like to support unofficial means. But when it's unavailable the way it was intended, it basically leaves few options. Chances, changes can happen on a whim. And what happens when a movie no longer fits corporate identities? What happens when, where is it here? I will just find it, there it is. What happens when Gone with the Wind no longer fits the corporate identity of the new parent company, Disney? Now this was Fox, I believe, or Warner Brothers. This is Warner Brothers, sorry. What happens when Gone with the Wind was getting such publicity about, oh, you know, the undertones of this movie is, it doesn't fit with modern society. We better erase it. Warner Brothers looked at that and said, okay, we better get rid of it. Like, And as far as I'm concerned, I don't know if they've re-added it. I haven't searched, but I believe there are there are places where you can still watch this movie online. Obviously, I'm not 100% sure if they're backed by Warner or if there was a prior licensing deal. I just know that for a while this movie was removed from online and I believe at the time of this filming, it may still be in some places. Gone with the Wind no longer fits with the corporate identity of a company. And they said when they pull it, they made that choice of, hey, this no longer fits. Um, we're getting a lot of bad publicity. I mean, the cancel culture things went a bit crazy with erasing older content. I'm a fan of preserved content. Yes, it's not always going to match what modern society is, but that's the point of an older movie. It holds a flashlight to the time and says, hey, this is what we were like 60 odd, 70 odd, 80 odd years ago. So I am a fan of keep it in its form and let the public put a disclaimer in there if you must, but it the public is not idiots. They can understand this is a product of its time. And what happens when changes happen? Like Gone with the Wind was outright, uh, was just basically taken offline. Song of the South you can't even get anymore. Like Song of the South is erased. I mean, try finding a modern version, a HD version of Song of the South. Like you can't do it. It's not on Disney+. Plus. The last time that was released was Laserdisc and VHS. Like it wasn't even released in the DVD days. So things can happen where it no longer fits the corporate identity and your purchases can be affected by that. What happens with something like WrestleMania 20? Now, obviously they have started showing this again on WWE Network, but for about a decade or so, or not a decade, maybe till the network started from about 2007 till the network started. A lot of this pay-per-view was edited because Chris Benoit, obviously a lot of people will know that name, Chris Benoit, wrestler, is a victim of CTE, does, um, takes a path, a dark turn, it's the darkest day in wrestling history, and we find out about him and his family and what had, had, had occurred. And this pay-per-view was largely edited for the longest time. Yes, they have restored a lot of it to its original form because, yes, it doesn't fit the corporate identity, but it is preservation. But even then, when this was released, this was even altered. Like Victoria's theme, all the things she said, that didn't have, that wasn't ported across from the pay-per-view airing to this because by the time this DVD came out, the licensing would have expired. I believe the same thing can be said for Jesse the Body Ventura's theme in the original pay-per-view airing. That was also changed in the newer versions. And do you understand what I'm saying about this? Star Wars, for example, is one of the more, how do I put this? Is one of the more notable things on terms of you can't watch the original versions. There's a big community out there that talk about this and restore this online. And yes, they're not official means. And I don't think, like we talk about emulators in gaming and em emulators in gaming preserve what was there when the game is no longer being shipped or no longer being made or available. Now companies out there are going to war with emulators and they need to stop that. But what happens when it happens in film form? Well, people, Star Wars fans are some of the most passionate fans around. They have basically rescanned film prints of this that they found and put it online as something like 4K77 and Despecialized and so on.
because you cannot get the theatrical versions. Now they are unofficial memes. None of that money, if any, is going back to Disney slash Fox slash Lucasfilm. So which is why I'm a big, I have a bit of a problem with piracy and I am, I believe in supporting the industry. That doesn't also mean like I support them versions of Star Wars. Yes, I bought them, but it's also, I wanted them as a preservation thing. Now, obviously I have Laserdisc versions. I have VHS versions. There are many ways to watch the original cut. There's also 4K77, which I do have and I have seen, but I don't promote it. I don't do any of that. I just talk about it as a, yes, a necessity because corporate identities have changed. And George Lucas was largely about, no, you cannot ship this film in its original form. Like that was a big thing of when he sold it to Disney. He, you can't release the original form. Now I'm sure Disney will do as they're going to do. I mean, they do. Lucas does have some sway in that company. Don't get me wrong. But if Disney said tomorrow, you know what? It's been 50 years since Star Wars. Let's put it back out in 2027. And yeah, let's put it in its original form. Disney will do that. And you can say what you will, but Disney's going to do what they're going to do. But for right now, you can't get the original version of Star Wars on digital, on physical media. At least beyond a certain point, beyond 1997. And obviously the 2006 special edition, uh, limited editions are kind of a special piece because they were transferred from earlier laser discs. So what happens when changes are, what happens when things are altered? What happens when the films are altered and you can no longer get Star Wars in its current, in its original form? Well, it kind of does encourage piracy in a lot of ways. That's why people turn to 4K77. That's why people turn to this specialize. That's why people will turn to an older version of uh, Terminator 2. I've mentioned it many times. Terminator 2 has been changed. Cameron films in large part have been changed. And people are going back trying to buy film reels these days. Like I saw one the other day where it was Super Android 13, I believe, uh, Dragon Ball Z film. Now, Toei Animation haven't officially scanned and released a 4K transfer of Dragon Ball Z in any form, at least to my knowledge at this time. So what film, film fans did is they chipped together, were able to acquire the first part, the first reel of Super Android 13, and they rescanned it in 4K. So now we have Head Shala in glorious 4K. Because the corporate entity that owns that wasn't doing it, fans pulled together, and that's not an official copy, but do you understand what I'm saying? It does encourage people to go through unofficial means when the companies aren't doing it. And I know people will say, I can have hard drives full of movies. That is your prerogative. I'm not going to talk about that. But I try to support the industry when I can. So that's my mentality. But what happens when a DNR job goes wrong? What happens when, and when I say DNR, I'm talking about digital ROIS reduction. They remove a lot of the grain, film-ish grain. You have a lot of film grain. And you get a clearer picture when it's done right. And when it's done wrong, you have something that looks like a wax figure which is what my biggest complaint is with the Cameron movies and the Cameron transfers to 4K. Now, obviously, that's not every film. I think 2001, get it right. And 2001 Space Odyssey, I'm talking about. 2001 Space Odyssey, get it right. Like they have, that is the gold standard for how to transfer an older film. But you have a choice when you come to physical media. You can go back and watch older versions. You can go back and watch a pre- restoration version of DVD of True Lies if the new version is too waxy and looks too cleaned up and too artificial. Now obviously you can't do that on the digital age. You are locked to the copy they give you, to the copy that they allow you to watch. And I'm not going to say purchase because I will get to that in a later point in this video, but you are not purchasing that content. When you press buy, you're not buying it. When you press purchase, you're not purchasing it. What you're purchasing is a license to that content that can be removed at any given time. Now, that gets onto the topic of ownership. And what do I mean with ownership? Well, first things first, you cannot resell it. If you buy it digitally, it is a corporate company that says, hey, this is our copy. We're allowing you to stream it or we're allowing you to download it to a hard drive but you cannot sell it on, you cannot give it to a friend, you cannot do this. They have, there's all rules in if you read the guidelines. And I'm not, you have to go into the actual documents to know where legally you're not allowed to do things. Now, obviously the rental store days had similar models, but if I got Hollow Man and so it was like, hey, I'm gonna give this to a friend, I can do that at a second's notice. Like 
nothing's stopping me from getting that Blu-ray off my shelf and giving it to a friend. Like, I'm sure there are, I mean, iTunes when it first came out was a big, we're dealing with a lot of issues of like, hey, you can't put CDs onto a iPod. You can't do that. That's not legal. And then iTunes were like 99 cents. Let's give everyone their music at 99 cents, make it cheap and affordable. Now, the difference between that is that if, let's say, Machine Gun Funk was changed on this CD right uh, on iTunes because Bad Boy Records got sued and a lot of the samples had to get removed. Oh, here's another question. Knowing what we know about um, Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, what happens if Bad Boy folds tomorrow? What happens if the corporate entity that takes it over says, we're not comfortable with anything to do with Puff Daddy, anything he's worked on, we're going to avoid it, we're going to get rid of it, no, we're never going to put it online again. This would be a victim of it. I'm just saying, like, it could happen. Like, it no longer fits the corporate ban. If he is convicted, obviously, Babo Records could go under. I'm just saying it could happen. I mean, it's very real. The government could seize the assets. And I'm just saying Notorious B.I.G.'s albums could be affected by that. So I own those physically, regardless of how it turns out. I don't believe, I'd have to read the court documents, obviously, to know what happened, what had occurred, what dates. But I can still listen to that in its original form, even with the changes now. I don't have to listen to the online versions right now because the original CD is right there in that case. I can listen to it as Biggie Smalls would have listened to it when he was listening, checking the album and signing off and then saying, yep, let's ship it. That's what I'm listening to. And I can loan that to a friend. I can rip a copy and say, hey, put this on your iPod or whatever. You know, I can do stuff like that. But you have no say on changes in the digital space. You have no say in what they do, that you have no say in what they choose to do with your collection. You will get what they give you and you will like it. And that is all they will say. Well, if you don't like it, don't buy it. That's the thing I hear from so many people brainwashed by that community in the online space. Oh, well, if you don't like it, don't buy it. Don't, buy it. don't get Disney Plus. Don't do this. Don't do that. I choose to have certain things on. I do have streaming services. I choose to. But let's say I don't know what Disney's going to do in five years. Maybe, maybe Prey is a movie that says, hey, that doesn't fit with our corporate identity. Maybe the actress in this has done something outrageously bad and maybe they say hey no no we don't agree with that anymore corporately we can't put this movie on disney plus anymore now if this didn't have a physical release which is a sign of the digital age where a lot of things are exclusive and not getting physical releases if they say hey no longer fits with our corporate brand get rid of it there will be no official means if this was not on a physical format to have this movie or anything so when they put it out on physical media i was like yeah, I need to have it because it does preserve things. So, you know, you can resell it. You can loan it to a friend. Like, that's one couple of things. If you get desperate for money, it doesn't look like it behind me, but these could be assets. They could be sold, given at a lower price because they're used or so on. Some are still sealed, but it would be a lower price. But I could sell them. It's something that I could give away to a friend. It's something they could say, hey, I'm done with this copy of, I don't know, Fahrenheit 9-11. I will give this to a friend. You go and watch it. Here you go. Or, hey, I'm, I have a version of this, another version. Here's a copy for you. Go and watch it and let me know. But this is the thing. It gives you options when you own it. And when you don't own it, like digital... You are stuck at the storefront. You are stuck at, hey, you can't show you this storefront. You have to have them over your house, whatever, or do all that stuff. And you will own nothing and like it. That's the mentality of streaming services. Hey, we want to provide it to you at a license. I mean, there's been a shift from a lot of software companies over the years, like Microsoft, to go to a model with Microsoft Word. I remember when Microsoft Word used to be a disk and you put it on your computer and it's one-time purchase. And then it's on that computer forever. I've still got a disk, that I, a 2002 version of it, that I can still install. Now, that's no longer the case with corporate Microsoft. They have figured out licensing deals work better. They can upgrade it constantly, so you're getting more updates. But also, you are paying year after year, whereas one-time purchases are still becoming a way of the past. 
And this is what I would consider physical media. It's a one-time purchase rather than a recurring expense. While you won't see the immediate cost outperform streaming, like streaming is a lot cheaper, digital pur purchases to a large extent are a lot more convenient. Over the course of 20 or 30 years, maybe even 40, 50 years, I could, I could essentially see this outperforming it in terms of cost. Like as streaming goes up and becomes more of a monopoly, monopoly then what will happen is you will be more susceptible because you now owe nothing to what they ask. If they say, hey, we're going to charge $100 for Disney+, Plus, Disney's bought every studio in the world. If you want to watch all your Fox content and Warner Brothers and Paramount and all that, one place, we're going to charge $500 a month. And yes, there'll be a corporate thing, a big backlash against it. But what happens if that happens? Now, obviously, there are laws to prevent against monopolies, but that's, I mean, how enforceable is it? And when I talk about preservation, when we talk about gaming consoles, when we talk about what happens when gaming consoles are getting rid of disk drives, there's a reason why they're getting rid of disk drives, because it allows them full control. I talked about this in a previous video that Horizon Zero Dawn, since they announced the remaster, has went up double, even like almost tripled in price on the PlayStation Store. This used to retail on the PlayStation Store digitally for $25. It used to retail for $25. On sale, you could probably get it for about $12 to $15. And then when the remaster was announced, it's went up to $59.95 now for a game from 2017 because they know they can charge more because there's a remaster. You can upgrade from a PS4 version to a PS5 version for like $10, bucks, And they are closing that loophole. And that is what storefronts can do. And if you own this digitally, what happens if they say, hey, you know how we have that PS4 version? Yeah, let's uh, take that offline and anyone who hasn't downloaded it, we're just going to take it offline and the PS5 version's there now. So we want to encourage people to go to PS5. Now, there may be laws getting introduced in California to prevent that, but we'll get to that bit later. But right now, if you want to buy Horizon Zero Dawn right now, that's $59.95 in, um, in Australia. So there's that. And monopolies can and will do what's best for their corporate business, to their shareholders, to people who hold that stock. And what happens when a game is no longer licensed and can't be put out there? What happens when a, a company is acquired over and over and over and over again? A lot of people will know I've recently bought an Atari. I did an Atari video a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago. And when I talked about the Atari, I was like, hey, I bought an Atari 2600 Plus, it's over in the corner. And I've got, I bought a bunch of games recently for 250 bucks and I paid more for the games than I did the console. But in that, I got stuff like Alien. Now obviously that's got the 20th Century Fox logo on it and also the licensing deal. They're not making this cartridge anymore. Obviously you can play it through emulators. I'm sure there's emulators online where you can play this game, but this is its original form. It's an actual cartridge that I can put in the Atari and play. Now that's pre preserving it in its current, in its original form. That's how it was originally meant to be played. And yes, while emulators are important and important to the gaming and preservation, it is very important to be aware that not everything has to be online. Not everything has to be an emulator. Not everything has to be altered. I mean, yes, the Atari 2600 Plus is an emulator. That's essentially what it is at its essence. It's not playing it directly from the cartridge. It doesn't operate 100% like an original Atari 2600. But it's close. It's really, really close. And when you hit purchase on these websites, yeah, they could have this up. I'm sure if they did a deal with, hey, Atari, we're going to give you back the, the, the uh, license to Alien. You can put it on the Atari 50 collection or whatever. I'm sure there'd be little things, changes like, hey, you have to call it 20th Century Studios, not 20th Century Fox. Little changes can occur. But there is a there is a light at the end of this tunnel. California is starting to introduce laws against calling it purchase and calling it buy on these digital services. Because we're not actually buying things. You're actually renting it or long-term leasing. So there's been a uh, law passed in California that I believe comes into effect in 2025. And it states that you, as a storefront, if you were an iTunes or a Amazon or a what else markets movies, you know, 
if you were one of those big services, you sh PlayStation Store, Xbox. If you were selling things on your service, then you cannot call it purchase or buy without informing the person who's pressing the button, hey, you don't own this. You are essentially paying for a license that can be revoked at any given point. That is what the California law is setting out to do. Now, obviously how companies choose to implement that when it comes into effect is on them, but they could risk being sued over false advertising should they break that law. So there is a light at the tunnel where California is really starting to recognize, hey, people are hitting purchase and then as the purchase is getting taken, people are realizing they don't have any control over the digital space. And a lot of people like me feel uncomfortable about going fully digital now because we've been burnt in the past. We've been, we've essentially seen what can happen when digital happens. Yes, you own nothing. Yes, you have the convenience of having it at your fingertips, but at the cost of you have no control over the versions you like, you have no control over your favorites. Let's say I didn't like the, the newer versions of Titanic. Obviously, there were changes made in 2012 that have been ported across to the 4K. And since the 4K, there was also digital noise reduction done. So let's say I didn't like DNR, but I like the 2012 changes. I can go back to the older Blu-ray. Let's say I didn't like the changes in the 2012 remaster for the 3D. I can go back to the 1997 DVD or 1998 DVD. There are different versions in physical media that allow me to choose the exact version I want to watch. Now, that's not always the case with stuff like Star Wars, where, yes, I do like the pre-1997, but they're usually not in the best, best way to view, like in modern age on a modern OLED or a modern 4K TV. So that's where stuff like piracy come in. That's where stuff like 4K77 come in, where it's I wouldn't necessarily call 4K77 a pirate. I'll call it a preservation librarian effort, a consorted effort a consorted effort from fans to preserve what the studio is no longer preserving. And while I think, yes, Disney do have a case if they ever chose to go after the makers of 4K77 and the makers of Despecialized, they could have a case because it is their intellectual property that is being taken and put out on the internet on that form. It could be argued under this new California law, especially like if you purchased Star Wars and bought the 4Ks and bought it digitally and you were under the thing where they call it, where is it here? Let me have a look at New Hope. Now, obviously, New Hope wasn't the original Star Wars, but let's say it came on here and said, oh, you'll have access to, I don't know, let's just say it said theatrical somewhere on here. Extended and deleted scenes? Movie. Let's just say it said movie. Nothing that states, hey, 1997, post-1997 version of the movie. There's nothing to say on here that you're getting the original theatrical version. And people who purchase on that, let's say you knew nothing and lived under a rock and knew nothing about it, you could have an argument in that case of like, hey, you were false advertising that and you were saying that it was Star Wars, but it's not Star Wars. At the post-1997 version that's been updated of Star Wars, but it's not Star Wars in its original theatrical form. So the California law offers a lot of potential benefits Obviously, it comes down to interpretation, and we don't know how it's going to be implemented. Obviously, with gaming, I'm hoping that it also preserves gaming. It stops wars on emulators and stops war on preservation. I've talked once or twice about PlayStation 3 essentially not doing enough to preserve that format. I mean, yes, PS4 and PS5. Uh, PS5 was backwards compatible with PS4 titles. But, I mean, PlayStation now is at the point where they can't even ship the Pro Console with a disk drive. And yes, you can buy the disk drive, you can add it on, you can do all that stuff. But it is testing the market of like, oh, let's just get rid of disk drives. And people are not going to, people are going to choose convenience at first. Don't get me wrong. People are going to gravitate towards PS5 Pro. People are going gravi towards, to gravitate towards PS6. But in about two or three generations, people are going to start saying, oh, you know, I want to go back and play The Last of Us in its original PS3 or PS4, PS3 version, or maybe the remastered version. I want it cleaned up a bit. I don't mind a bit, a few of the things here and there. I want to play the PS4 remastered version. What happens if it's not compatible anymore? What happens if you can't put in your disc? What happens if it's pulled from the store? What, if they ha what happens if they want you to play the remake from PS5 generation? Yes, you might say that is the way to go, but we've seen with stuff like GTA Trilogy, how 
things like that can be badly miscommunicated by a company that doesn't understand what was originally there and doesn't understand preservation and like you get stuff like the horrendous job that was done to the GTA trilogy that is still a meme to this day and you can just still pop in the PS2 version into your PlayStation 2 and play that that way the way it was intended the way it was originally seen you can do it on your Xbox uh, original Xbox or Xbox 360 as well I think that can also be done but it is preservation in a way and I think this California law is also telling people you don't own them but I feel like there's going to be more laws behind it that state, hey, you need to make sure that it's set, it states this is from its altered from its original form. They used to do it in the DVD days where it would have on the cover, this is altered from its original theatrical form to 133 to 1. So it, it would be a, a different aspect ratio. So you would have that on the cover when you were buying it. You knew what you were getting. And yeah, I just think the dangers of digital are very at the forefront of 2024 and 2025 even. And we need to be aware of how dangerous it is. Yes, I understand this is not the best look, but at the end of the day, I own these movies. No one's going to run into my house like Christopher Nolan says. No one's going to come in here and grab Oppenheimer off my shelf and say, you are no longer allowed to watch Oppenheimer. Since we're talking about Christopher Nolan, you're not allowed to watch Oppenheimer anymore. You're going to watch it digitally. Universal's not going to run in my house and take that off my shelf. They can do it online. Let's say Christopher Nolan does something outrageously bad, like like certain people did. Not 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 notorious B.I.G., the person who produced that album. But you know, I am um, let's say something like that was to occur. And they say, hey, uh, yeah, we're gonna take up and we're just gonna take up and time it down real quick. Um, yeah, we just kinda don't want it there. We better take that down from online. It makes us look bad. Well, that could happen. And that's the thing that Christopher Nolan's really pushing. And I freaking love that Christopher Nolan's doing it because he's a big voice in the physical media space. And he's saying, yeah, you own the movie. No one can take it off you. That's right there. It also helps filmmakers because obviously Nolan understands that if a physical copy was to sell, they don't have to go through all the algorithm, how many times it's been streamed. They just understand. A Blu-ray copy of this sold, it means that the movie's been bought. So we get a bigger percentage. Someone like Matt Damon has said that in the past. Physical media, they got a bigger cut for Goodwill Hunting for physical media and the rental release. Shawshank Redemption, for example, didn't make its money back in cinemas, but it was the number one rental of 1995 when it came to VHS. So I am a fan of physical media, and until I see a shift in the digital space where it A, protects my purchases, meaning I own them, I, meaning if it's on a server, I can download them and it can never be taken offline, it has to be backed by whatever. It needs to be 100% confirmed. But then again, how they are susceptible to getting, you know, hacked or if something happens, like a massive power outage at the super centers that they build with server racks and all that, what happens if that happens? Like your purchase can be affected too. Facebook can go down offline, you know. If Facebook can crash and Twitter can crash and all these other services can crash or Twitter X, you know. All these services can crash, and if they can crash, YouTube can crash. Like, everything can crash. Everything can be taken offline. PlayStation Store in 2011 was down for 30-odd days when it crashed. It, or hacked, I should say. It was, it can happen, it will happen, and when that happens, this doesn't need an internet connection. Now, obviously, you do need power to play the things. You need power. But I could put a disk drive into my, my uh, MacBook or even my... Windows Service Go. I could do that and I could play it that way. I mean, you won't get as much time out of it, but it's still something, you know? I could buy a portable DVD player and watch DVDs. There, there are other ways. Solo it opens up benefits. But you know what I mean? Like, there are, this is the point I'm trying to make. Digital is susceptible to things. And I need to be, a, I don't trust digital anymore. I probably wouldn't go back fully digital ever again because I have been burnt by them in the past, the digital revolution where purchases were taken. I purchased a rental to um, Equalizer 2 when that first came out. I purchased my rental, was ready to watch it, wait till about midnight and I'm like, okay, I'll watch it at midnight and start the new day with it. But at midnight, clock struck midnight, license still ex expired and I couldn't watch it anymore. And it was down for maybe 48, 72 hours. But it was like, oh no, we can't actually do that. And I ended, I ended up having to have an argument with iTunes and they ended up giving me the money back. 
but these are things that can occur. You might think they're never going to occur to you. You might think you have hard drives full of it. You might think you have whatever. But it's like we're almost living in the matrix. And it's like people are defensive of a system. They're corporate overlords, the machines that provide them with convenience. And yes, I understand it's more convenient. I understand having all your content at your fingertips is more convenient than having a room full of physical media. I get it. But I am a fan of preservation. I am a fan of having this on a shelf. I am a fan of not relying fully on digital. There are massive dangers, massive red flags that I don't trust that Dragon Ball Z is going to be altered. Like, obviously, they've put it back into 4x3 format now with these steelbook things here. Obviously, it's back in 4x3 aspect ratio. This is the Great Saiyan Man saga. Now, obviously, this is back in 4x3 format. But it's not true 4x3 format, if that makes sense. It's like they've re reframed it and put out a new version of it that is basically from the 16x9 stretched and fixed and all that stuff. And yes, it's it's a better transfer than it was prior. But I've still got my Dragon Boxes up to the side, and I'll end on that. I've still got my Dragon Boxes. Let me grab this off here real quick. I'll come close to the camera. I've still got my Dragon Boxes up there. And I still have all physical media. I still have a lot of things. Let me grab this off. I still have Dragon Boxes up there, and they are considered the best way to watch Dragon Ball Z. I still have the X-Files up there. 24's been altered, uh, hasn't been altered, but what happens if they say Jack Bauer's corporate doesn't fit with our corporate identity? What happens if they say it's Sopranos? Oh, that's big crime. We better take that off. It's rugby League, old sport, like obviously I've got State of Origin box, you know. Stranger Things, what happens if they say, hey, Stranger Things, we better alter that the first few seasons. Columbia Classics down there and Bruce Lee as well. But you know, physical media is important. And I think the dangers of digital are far too great to ignore. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there because I'm holding the phone in a weird way. Let me just grab that. But anyways, let me know what you think, guys, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.